Good morning, church. I hope you're ready for the AM Devo with Boo in the book of Revelation. We're still on chapter one, but we might rip into chapter two today. So this morning, I'm going to be in Revelation. I'm going to start at verse nine, where it says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God. And let me just read to you a little bit about what John was experiencing. Um, this is from Dave Guzik's Enduring Word Commentary, but it says the island of Patmos was like an Alcatraz island in the Roman Empire. Could you imagine that? It was used as a prison island and functioned as a jail without bars. The island was rich in marble and most of the prisoners were forced uh, t labors in the marble quarries. So Patmos was a rocky, desolate island around 10 miles long and 6 miles wide. I found something really interesting too in the commentary um, and it is that, um, let me try to find this, yeah it says that there was no land for cultivation um, except some little nooks between the ledges of rocks. So um, Man, not much there, right? So obviously John might have been on that island because he was being persecuted by Rome. And Rome at this time uh, began their emperor worship, which uh, you might have heard of before where you look at Caesar and you kind of worship Caesar as a god. And uh, John most likely was persecuted by the Romans and put on this island and notice it was he was there and he says he calls himself something really cool he says I'm a brother I'm a brother man I love that you know it you know what it tells me right off the bat too in this morning is like uh that's all we are t with each other we're brothers and sisters in Christ right brothers and sisters in Christ basic brothers and sisters in Christ I remember one of my first youth groups we called it basic um, brothers and sisters in Christ and and that's it I'm no better we're no less than one another we're, we're brothers and sisters and I love that John the Apostle man says I John your brother and companion isn't that great I'm your brother and companion you know that's what we are we're, we're we are that family um, in in the body of Christ and you know I don't want to put myself up above other people or, or on the other aspect, I don't want to put myself below other people. Uh, we are, you know, together in this. We are on that same page. We are all part of the body of Christ. So, you know, this morning, help. I, I definitely want help from God not to be able to look at myself above what I should be looking at myself as. And I don't want to look at myself less than either. Uh, I want to be able to just understand that I'm part of the church uh, of Christ, and therefore we are family members, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are basic, right? So he says um, we're fellow companions in the suffering, right? Going through these trials in kingdom um, and uh, uh, and the kingdom and patient endurance. So um, so we're part of a kingdom. And right now we're going through suffering, we're going through trial, and we have to endure patiently, right? And um, and so that's what he's encouraging us to do, right? We At all, at times, we're going to go through suffering and trials, and we need to realize that we're part of a, another kingdom. And so he says that he was on the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, so he had this experience, right, on the Lord's day first day of the week in the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 7 that was a day which the Christians met for um, collections and to help out the churches and and help out the ministry and so um, here he is on the Lord's day the day of the Lord uh, was the day the first day they, they the Lord raised on that day so he says I was on, on the spirit and I heard a voice uh, like a trumpet which said to me write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches to Ephesus, Smyrna, Perg Pergamum, 
Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So those are the places. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing good. Brother. That's right. I'm your brother. Um, you know what I love about that section, too, is it says, it says, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Sometimes, you know, the Lord gets your attention just like, bing. You know, it's like a, it's like speaks to you so loud and clear. And those are, those are beautiful. Sometimes there's times where it's, it's quiet and, and the Lord speaks to you in just a quiet voice, you know, and then there's times where it's, man, it is trumpet like, right. And alarming like, and, uh, you know, we, we just have to go with it with what, you know, how the Lord is speaking to us at, at the moment. Um, I praise God for those loud moments, but sometimes those loud moments can be interrupt too. Like, whoa, this is going to be a heavy message from God to me. And we need to just bear with that. And then sometimes God's so gentle where he just kind of taps so soft. He's just like, yo, hey, let's just work on this, you know. Mm. And verse 12 says, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like the son of man dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire, and his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword, and his face was like a sun shining in all of his brilliance. That's radical. (laughs) There's no doubt about that, right? That's pretty gnarly to see that. Sometimes some of the things that we get from God are just so, just so firecrackery. They're like a volcano, man. And, and praise God for that too, right? And here he gets this incredible vision of, of Christ. And it says, when he saw him, he fell down at his feet, though dead. You know, how am I going to respond to Christ? You know, uh, um, you know, I, I love John's reaction. I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me. Oh, God's so comforting, right? He's so beautiful to touch us and to reach out, intimate, right? To touch us, you know, to speak to us in our vulnerability, in our areas of being dead, in our areas of being vulnerable, right? Falling at his feet, very vulnerable position, right? Um, you know, I don't know how often you bow in your life, but when you bow, it's very vulnerable. You know, when you take a, when you kneel down, when you kneel to pray or you prostrate yourself just in submission to the Lord, you're seeking God. Um, that's a very vulnerable position. Someone could come up behind you and hit you and harm you and you're, you're, you're done, you know, you're there on, on the ground. And, um, And so here you see that when John is at his most vulnerable position, what does God do? He just places his right hand on me and he says, do not be afraid. Isn't that cool? His right hand just places out, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. Don't worry about dying, right? I have the keys of death and Hades, right? I, I, I'm i in control, you know? And then he says, therefore, I got something for you. You know, and I love that. Not only does he help us in our vulnerability, and Jesus is there to be there when I'm vulnerable. And he knows my failure. He knows my frailty. He knows I am but dust, you know, do you still know that you are but dust? Do you still really know your frailty? Can can you really say today, like, hey, yeah, I'm doing good, but man, I do know my frailty. I know there's vulnerability with me. And, you know, what does Jesus do? He touches him and then he says, you know what, I got something for you. Isn't that cool? Even in our fear, when we're afraid, what does he say? Don't be afraid. I got something for you. You know, and that's so Jesus-like, right? Let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. But now I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am you may be also. Right? He meets us in our fear, 
And then he encourages us to do something, right, in him. What? And then he says, hey, I want you to write some letters, right? I want you to do this. And so then when we get to the letters, it's really neat. Uh, like the letter to the Ephesians, it starts off to the angel or messenger to the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. And the interpretation of that, by the way, is in verse um, 20, if you wanted to see it, a verse 1. But um, he walks in the midst of the churches, okay? And I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name, and have not grown weary. Man, what a great word to us, right? To not grow weary. Don't grow weary weary. Sometimes the things we hear, you know, the way things are moving in the world, sometimes we can grow weary. And I'm telling you, the more we go on, you know, the more when we shut things down, you know, when we shut all the news off, you'll find your world will will be more peaceful. And you'll be more focused and you maybe not won't grow so weary. I tell you, a lot of our anxiety is just from all the projections that we hear, right? This might happen, that might happen. And it, wow, it can get gnarly quick where, you know, I watch five minutes of any news nowadays and I feel like, what's going on? Like all of a sudden my heart rate went up and my uh, immunity system went down. It's like, I think probably the not good health is to watch all the news. <laughs> Maybe that's taken down our immunity levels you know, our ability to fight off things because we're, our anxiety goes up, our cortisol levels go up, and we get all crazy. And I'll let Pam Richards talk more about all those things because she knows much more about that stuff than me. Yet, don't grow weary, right? What a great word this morning. Yet, I hold this against you because you have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things which you did at first. And do not, if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this, uh, uh, but you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Okay. What I get out of this little section is this: It's good to repent. And it's good to always remain in a state of needing repentance and that repentance is a part of your life. And that's okay. You know, that kind of, there's vulnerability in repentance, but as we saw with Jesus already in our vulnerability, he meets us right there. And he says, don't be afraid. It's okay. You know, it's okay to, to talk about our areas of struggle. Go to someone you trust. You know, someone you could talk to about it. You know, repentance is a move towards good. It's a, it's a good thing. You know, when someone says, hey, repent, I should never want to go, oh, no, 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 no. I should go, hey, yeah, you know, repentance is a good thing. You know, Jesus is saying repent. Jesus would never tell us to do something that's not good. You know, so I have to start seeing repentance as a positive. Or else what will happen is I'll grow into a person who thinks that I don't need to repent or that there's nothing in my life to which to repent for. And then I've wrapped right into what we call a Pharisee without even knowing it. And so, yeah, I want to have a sensitive heart towards the Lord. So when the Lord says, hey, you know what? I have this against you. You've left your first love. That I go, man, that's so true. You know, help me, Lord. Grant me that repentance. You know, let me let me have that thing that you you say that is, is something I need. Whatever you think I need, that's that's the best for me. I trust you. You know, do I need compassion? Give me that compassion. Do I need humility? Give me that humility. So we see that God's in control, and He has things He wants to give us and move us in. And it's okay. We can move in those directions. So we see don't grow weary. And we see that, hey, 
to move repentance is a good move. And uh, so we're going to end our devotion there because it was really good, right? I mean, just the idea of Jesus reaching us in vulner- vulnerability and that God wants to touch me in my vulnerability today. And when Jesus speaks to us, he's encouraging us to not grow weary. And he's also telling us, hey, to work on other areas of your life, you know, work on things. And so, you know, those, that's that's the Christian life, man. The Christian life is a constant moving in g- jamming, repenting, jamming, repenting. And it's like we always are working like that. Yeah, if you're not working like that, then again, something maybe worse has happened <laughs> to you. Um, and um, that's for another story, right? Um, you guys have a great day. Enjoy it. And we will, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll just keep rolling through the book of Revelation. It'll be fun, man. This is a great book, and it's got a lot of good stuff for us. So um, thanks for joining. Bye-bye.